Здравейте, аз съм Иван Иванов, а вие сте с проекта UFO Discoja Bulgaria. Този филм или това интервю, което ще видите сега, е с а, един голям мой приятел, а, доктор Пол Хайнек, син на доктор Алан Хайнек. Между впрочем, Пол Хайнек ще бъде един от нашите специални лектори по време на международната конференция в България глобално съзнание и контакт с звездните хора. Проекта UFO Disclosure Bulgaria е създаден с цел да даде много чиста, ясна, сериозна информация за феномените свързани не само около НЛО, но и за Силата на човешкото съзнание. Какво можем да направим с нашето съзнание? Как можем да репрограмираме а, клетките на нашето тяло? Как можем да бъдем по-здрави? Как можем да развием способности, които повечето хора наричат а, екстраординерни или на български казано свръхспособности? Понеже в България няма нито една сериозна организация или хора, които да изследват тези феномени, по тази причина е създаден и UFO Discoja Bulgaria. Това е една уникална възможност не само за българите, но и за хората по света да научат повече за природата на феномените. Например, състояние близки до смъртта, пътуване извън тялото. Също така, в а, нашето измерение, в, а, днешни, в днешно време, както и хилядолетия а, преди нас да ни има, тук на Земята са съществували цивилизации и все още съществуват. Има и такива, които са в други реалности, в други измерения, паралелни светове. Много често в последните години се сблъскваме с а, различни видови феномени и а, в повечето случаи ние не можем да разпознаем а, каква е природата на тези феномени и може би по инерция казваме, че това са извънземни, но не винаги те са извънземни. А, това е. Надявам се да се видим на конференцията в София. Okay, I can say two phrases. Okay. <coughs> okay. Hey, say no? yeah. <coughs> um, did you understand me when I spoke Bulgarian on stage? Yeah. <coughs> okay. Well, I'll do my best. Okay. Ochak vam. Oh, sorry. Ochak vam zaneta paini Sofia. Nadiavam se da se spravia dobre. And you doing very good job. So we have Paul Heinick for first time um, with us. It's a pleasure and also great honor to be with us with you for Disclosure Bulgaria. And also Paul Heinick will be one of the special guests in the year for Disclosure Bulgaria conference in Bulgaria. He would like to speak all the time in Bulgarian, his presentation to be in Bulgarian. And I asked him to not try because it's Bulgarian is very hot language. Anyway, welcome. Thank you. Blogodaria ti priatelju. Blogodaria. So, uh, 
I mean, everybody knew that you're the son of uh, the greatest doctor on the line, Alan Hynek. And uh, we in Bulgaria, we had all this, uh, this two seasons Project Blue Book uh, in Bulgarian language. And the actors did amazing work, I think. Good. I never saw your father in, hmm. in life, but when I, when I watched that two seasons, I, I, I believe that that's him. And you was uh, consulting that uh, yes. uh, that uh, show, so maybe you help them to to get much more closer to your dad, like character, like yes. But in your presentation, you sh you say that he was a funny man, like he liked to make jokes. What can you can you share with us actually this unknown side? The oh, my father. father. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, you know, um, people, and especially screenwriters who are writing about scientists, they don't understand scientists, and they tend to think that scientists are very serious, like Mr. Spock, and always thinking about logic. Yeah. My father was a physicist. Physicists don't know about logic. They know about laws of physics. And scientists are not all serious and logical and machine, like a robot. They, they're they just like everybody else. And my father had a very warm sense of humor. People that knew him knew that he was a professor, but he's a wonderfully fun guy to talk to who wanted to learn about the world and explore and and learn pretty, usually pretty bad jokes. <laughs> his, his background is chick. Yes, <clears throat> my father was 100% Czech. His parents moved to Chicago where there were many Czechs. And my father did not speak English until he went to school. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Actually, there's a belief that people who moved to the United States, the immigrants, they, uh, they became very, most of them, they became very successful in different kind of or scientists or engineers or... Yeah, and I think that may not be so much because of America, but think about the people who leave other countries to go to America. They have so much ambition and so much determination and so much energy and passion that I think those people would have succeeded in any country. Mm -hmm. Jonathan Asu, he's a Bulgarian, and he is one of the uh, the people who create the computer. I don't know if you're familiar with this, uh, but yeah, this is one of the examples. What can do the imi the immigrants coming here mm -hmm. in the U.S. the the country of the freedom of if you have a dreams, you can uh, fill your dreams. <laughs> um, okay, so. Um, yeah, your dad, he was uh, uh, one of the, the best astrophysics, if I am correct, or, okay. And he was invited from uh, uh, government to, to do this uh, scientific research about the, this strange flying objects. Um, I don't know how, <laughs> how many percent I'm supposed to trust of the, that show. Uh, Project Blue Book, but I know also from another sources that when uh, Project Blue Book was closed, shut down, they opened, actually they continue with another name, with another project, but uh, um, I knew that uh, Dr. Alan Heinen continued to do that investigations, researchings for himself. Mm -hmm. I mean, in that time he was 14 years old or how old you was? Uh, I was, when they stopped Project Blue Book, I was about seven years old. Oh. But they still, my father still consulted with them after that to some degree. Uh -huh. And like you said, my father did then study UFOs by himself. That, that's your mom also was uh, part of yes. one of them. Yes. So that is true in the movie. Yeah, the and, and you know, to your, to your point about how much of the show was accurate, a lot of the show was not accurate, mm -hmm. and it was not the intention for the television show to be accurate. The intention was to be authentic, yes. that they would capture the essence 
of the characters of my father and mother and portray them respectfully and in a way that was true to their character. But many, many, many of the incidents were not accurate. Right. I mean, probably they was in the movie just to uh, take more attention from the public. Yeah, or to combine characters, different characters into one, or also to visualize something that was in a report and, and show what that looked like, and then just to add fictional elements as well. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, actually some of the cases, <coughs> they're, they're real cases. Yes, especially mm -hmm. in season one, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And um, I mean, that's opening much more questions, um, especially for people who are looking for that true, uh, what is this UFOs? Now they, they call them by different way. Um, okay, so uh, when you grow up with the um, Hynek family, um, have you had ever some discussions like a family about uh, this strange UFOs? All the time. All of them? Sure. I mean, you were scared in that time. Yeah, and it's... Um, catch you. <clears throat> Well, I don't know life without UFOs. Um, my father was investigating UFOs before I was born. Yeah. So we would have discussions about it, or UFO witnesses would come over for dinner, or I would go to conferences with my father, or go investigate a case, or he would reporters would come over and interview him for television. Mm -hmm. So it was ever present. Travis Walton was in your home also. Yes. When he came to share his story, actually, do you know if uh, um, Dr. Alan Hanik investigated his case? Or he did. He did? Yeah. I mean, he passed the polygraph. Mm -hmm. He's a very yes. credible witness. Mm -hmm. very, I met him and I had an interview with him. And uh, yeah, and I feel that he is a very kind person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so in this case with Travis, he was taken on the board of this craft only because he was dead. He was hurt a lot from this energy or mm -hmm. something. Okay, now in these days, do you still have interest about this phenomena? Absolutely. Uh, you going more deeply or? Yes. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. I'm more actively involved in UFOs than I ever have been. Mm -hmm. Have you had any experience? You that have four kinds. He classified this phenomenon by first kind, second kind, third kind, and fourth kind. Now we have fifth kind. We've got more. More of fifth? More, I think there are eight or nine now, yeah. All right, okay. So, have you had any experience, if you can share with us? Not a classical UFO experience, no. I've had other strange experiences that might be related to UFOs. Like a paranormal or? Yes. I mean, if you want, you can share one. Of okay, well, I, the experience I think that is most closely related to UFOs is one I had when I was taking DMT which is the most powerful psychedelic drug in the world. And I took DMT because a friend of mine asked me where my father thought UFOs came from. And I said, well, my father as a scientist is very comfortable saying there is a UFO phenomena, but where they come from is much more difficult to say. But he didn't think that the extraterrestrial hypothesis explained all of the phenomena, <clears throat> as Jacques Vallée agrees with. And he thought there might be some type of interdimensional component. So I told this to my friend, and my friend said, you should read this book about DMT, because the book thinks that there might be a connection between DMT and aliens. And I said, I'll be happy to do that. And later that day, I met another friend who started talking about DMT. I was like, wow, okay. So I took DMT and it's an amazing experience. 
and I asked the intelligence that I felt I had encountered if they were the intelligence behind what we perceive as UFOs and aliens. And the answer came down to me that we cannot explain in a way that you would understand. And I thought, wow, I understand no, and you are not saying no. Okay, so I have been doing it more to pursue that further because I think, <clears throat> you know, with UFOs, it's, it's common knowledge that the sightings we have tend to correspond to the technology we have. In the 1890s, people reported seeing airships that look kind of steampunk with fins and things like that, <clears throat> because that's what they're used to. I think that that same phenomena may apply on a broader scale to the type of experience. So for example, some people say, oh, I've seen this kind of experience during DMT, or this experience when I see a ghost, or this when I do remote viewing, or this when I see, have a lucid dream, and this when I meet an alien. I think they might be somehow all related. So to me, the idea that DMT is related to UFOs is not a strange idea at all. I would like to prove that connection. That's not easy to do, but I would like to try. And there's another way, ayahuasca. Ayahuasca is DMT. It's a, yeah. a slightly but different variant of DMT. Maybe not too much chemical like DMT. No, it is. It's the same. It is? <clears throat> yeah, it's the same chemical. Oh. It's a, it's a different variant that's less bioavailable. DM, ayahuasca lasts for about six or eight hours. DMT lasts for about 15 minutes. Okay. I heard that ayahuasca is, uh, to partake ayahuasca, you have to have some kind of personal preparation and also some kind of spiritual ritual. ritual. I think before any type of experience with a powerful psychedelic substance, you should have some preparation and some type of ritual. It is not a game, it is not a toy. It is serious, it can be very helpful, very therapeutic, but it is something to approach with respect and understanding. Mm -hmm. Have you been ever in Bulgaria? Not yet, but I will be in Bulgaria you, in September of this year. And you, I believe you're excited. I'm very excited. <laughs> you need to try Shopska Salata. Okay. <laughs> and if you drink alcohol, I can offer you a rakia. A rakia. Yeah, this is traditional alcohol in Bulgaria. <laughs> Blogadariati. <laughs> Hello, uh, Bulgarian friends. I hope to meet you in September at the conference that Ivan is organizing. Uh, as we discussed, I have Czech heritage, so I have a special place in my heart for Eastern Europe. So I, I look forward to seeing my brothers and sisters in Bulgaria. And you can say Dovizdane, which means goodbye. Dovizdane.